Archer is the director's brother? Brother? And she brought him here? She's gonna get us all killed. What if she's working with the Hiss? <clears throat> Isn't it strange she showed up just when they did? The Hiss called me here. That's what I think. This is chilling out? Dude, this is... You look dead. You don't even... <laughs> they're oh, they're all really depressed. That's why. It's actually not that funny. I'm right outside this door. We already have some weird his people, too. <sighs> There's a lot going on. I don't know. I guess we should go to the containment sector and see whatever the hell Dylan wants me to see. But, before we do that, I think we should try to find the anchor plus Dr. Underhill under Central Research. So this is Central Research. This is... the... where was this one again? Actually, I don't quite remember. Uh, and then the Lang- and then Langston stuff. Cleanse and contain the Japanese paper lantern, traffic light, hand chair, moving letters. Do we know exactly where these are? When we also have this here. Find the six pouches worn by Arisha's old squad mates. Okay. It seems like the two that we know of the location exactly would be the old growth and enemy within. So why don't we go to central research then? We can probably- we don't even have to take the elevator, right? Guessing we can just do this. Astral constructs. Can I make something? I'm missing source and corrupted sample. Not much I can do here just yet. Missing a little bit of everything. Okay. Well. Central research. Yeah, back in the quarry, there is still this one place that we haven't been to yet. And who knows where the hell Marshall is right now? Like, we don't know. Isn't this curious, though? Like what I mentioned before, the furnace chamber has some pathways that go to where the quarry is. Weird. Research? Oh, there's a place in research that we haven't been to either. Should probably check that out. Yeah, firebreak. We saw that just now in the containment sector. Does it kind of link together with the other place? Oh, okay, maybe if we like turn the map 90 degrees counterclockwise? Okay, anyway, central research. Where are we? Luck and probability. This is where we found Marshall initially, but... Oh, it's okay that I came back here because there was this door I didn't open before. Okay. What's going on inside here? Oh? That's just the light? I don't think we've ever been able to interact with light switches before, right? What is this? Some kind of gambling thing? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> uh, I don't know what the hell happened just now, but that didn't seem good. We're still within the luck and probability lab right now, so... Were they doing some kind of testing on casinos here? Mm, can I do anything with this, or am I just looking at it? Okay. Lucky item manifest. Bronze koi fish, China. Attracts abundance and wealth, feng shui. Horseshoe Ireland, wards off evil. Orientation important. Heals up allows luck to be kept. Heals down, luck flows outward. Maneki Neko, Japan. Beckoning cat used in shops. Paw held up to beckon customers, creating luck for the business owner. Four Leaf Clover, Ireland. Shamrock, rare plant variation. Connections to druidic healing rituals. Elephant, China, protection, good luck, wisdom, feng shui. Light bulb, various. Documented gambling rituals indicate luck is produced when all lights in the room are turned on. Oh, that must be what that was about. Note, effects of items to be tested. 
Consider investigating the orientation of the horseshoe. Also, consider positioning of feng shui objects. Proximity of luck items may influence luck readings. For more information on ritual use, lucky actions to perform and avoid, and relevance to OCD behavior, see file. Hmm, you notice how China and Ireland have repeats here? It makes me think that those places are probably more superstitious and into folklore than other countries. Do they actually want me to do something here though? Because the light switches are interactable. And they've got these shields here, which we usually have at control points. They were studying the elephant, Maneki Neko, Four Leaf Clover, Light Switch, Horseshoe, and the Koi Fish. Okay. The picture on the right. It's showing the gambling thing, right? The little circle here. But what's the difference between the two? Like one has a line on the leg. Uh. Okay. Oh, is it the carpet? Don't stand on the red carpet? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Do they actually want me to, like, do something here, or...? Oh. Don't stand on the red carpet. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. So earlier, we did it, and it was a zero, right? Now it's a one. Is that all just randomized? It's a one again. Oh! -ho! <laughs> What's happening to this room here? Um... Did we turn on all the lights? That's on. That's on. Is that one on? No. Yes, it was. Uh-huh. Like, I'm assuming we can actually do something here, but I don't... know. Now it's a two. Is that like a measure of how lucky I am right now? <laughs> What's happening with this place? Wait, 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 so hold on. Let me try standing on the carpet. If I just stay here, will it be a one? <laughs> Things are happening all around me. You're right, so it is a one. But if I get off the carpet, it's a two. Ah, okay. In that case, maybe what they want me to do is... I turn on all the lights. They want me to bring in the four-leaf clover. And... Get the koi fish within two feet. Oh yeah, I remember! Back when we came here the first time. We could have taken the four-leaf clover out of the thing, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. So they just want me to, like, hold on to it, maybe? And this one... I guess we can... <gasps> oh my god. This thing better stay intact. The horseshoe? It's already in the good position right now, right? So leave it alone. The Maneki Neko, the elephants, we don't know their effects. How much is two feet? Two feet to what? Two feet to me or the thing? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll give it another try. And just to make sure, if we stay on the carpet here, that's a one. Oh, that's still a two. Is the fish thing not working? Oh, okay. Okay, maybe that'll work better. Oh! Oh! It disappeared the moment I stood next to it. What? Okay. Uh, I'm still doing something wrong, it seems. Do you want the fish? On here? 
<laughs> Hold up. How about like that? Oh! What's going on? Um, I want to get a seven, right? Because every time I spin this thing, seven is like highlighted. But I'm still missing something right now. I think it's the fish. How do I get the fish working properly? When we read the thing earlier, it said... Oh, did we get some new hotline things? Control point? Pretty sure we've seen that one already, but former. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Uh, the way to keep an employee is to, number one, offer better health packages than the competitor, and number two, threaten them. Threaten their existence. Make sure that they know if you leave their company, you will never exist in this fabric of reality ever again. <laughs> wow, you guys are extreme. I didn't sign up for this job, man, and what's my health benefits right now? You never even told me. Is there any kind of compensation for death? <laughs> I don't know. The proximity of luck items may influence luck readings, but uh, maybe I'm not doing this right. I'm pretty sure it's the fish that's the problem here. Like, what if I put it straight on top of this thing? <laughs> Maybe they want me to touch the elephant and the cat, even though the effects are not known. Actually, that would make perfect sense because we have a five right now, right? Touching these things might give me a seven. One each? How about now? Oh! Eight! Eight! A little bit too much? Take that off. Hey! <gasps> we got a new outfit from that and some ability points. How though? Where did it come from? I just got it in my inventory and that's it? Huh. Well, if I could add to this whiteboard here, it seems both of these items have effects on the luck too, but not the horseshoe. Or maybe the horseshoe was already a thing because we didn't touch it. Hmm. Well, interesting. That was kind of a long detour, but I'm glad we did it. Kind of want to see what the suit looks like too. But our main goal today is to really look for Dr. Underhill. Whoa! Maybe the other gun would be better here. The one thing that I've been noticing is that ever since we got the ability to launch large objects, launch has been taking a little bit longer, so we gotta account for that. Whew. We all good here? I remember the last time we never checked out the bathrooms here. Right, because when we took the elevator, we went right, but we never went left. Oh. 
Rubber duck. Discovered in the home of Agent M after his young daughter complained of being followed by her rubber duck. According to Agent M, the matter was ignored, believed to be the result of a child's imagination, until he began to hear the quacking at night. After discovering the item hiding in his daughter's closet, he brought it to the bureau for study. Update. It was discovered that Agent M was bringing known paranatural materials into his home, illegally taking them outside the oldest house. How this may have affected the creation of an altered item is being investigated. Agent M has been terminated. Oh, we saw this rubber duck back in the Panopticon. What happens when an agent gets terminated anyway? Like you just tell them to sign an NDA and don't tell anybody about anything here and that's it? Feels like it should be a bit more secretive than that. Are we going to the right place here? Once we get downstairs, we can head to the mold place again. Why are there footstep sounds? It's kind of scary. Right. Might be easier for me to just use the fast travel point here. Especially since I got four ability points, which I can put into health. Sure, why not? And now I don't gotta worry about that. Can I make anything new? No, I'm still missing some stuff here. Okay, no worries, no worries. Construct levels. I feel like we get so many mods already that we don't ever really need to make our own. But for the people who really want to maximize, min-max everything, maybe that's a good thing then. Board countermeasures, we're not in the executive sector, we're not in the containment sector. So we're really not going to be making too much progress on these ones. Mm, we are in the research sector right now, and we plan on getting mold people. So I think maybe we should abandon this and get this one instead. Charge maneuvers. We don't have charge just yet. Let's get back to a better place here. Central research. How about that? Oh, wait, what? I'm back here again! Oh, okay, just do this. That's fine. <laughs> That's why I got confused in the first place. Right, right, right. So the mold place that we were trying to go to last time should be... Around here. Oh. Threshold Utility Thresholds have always been sources of great inspiration and great challenge. When a new threshold manifests in the oldest house by M, we never know what new discoveries it will provide to the Bureau. But we must always seize these opportunities. This report will examine the process of distinguishing recent threshold effects based on their utilitarian possibilities. The quarry brought Black Rock, one of our most invaluable discoveries, but if the mold had any scientific value, it has been difficult to find, due to lengths we must go to, in fighting back the particularly prolific plant. These are very distinct cases and worth comparing as their study offers vastly different dangers and rewards. The mold? Some of it is really dangerous, to the point that we can't even stand near it. But some of it here, like what we're looking at right now, it seems to be okay that we go near it. At the moment, we don't really know what dictates that. And I guess that's why we're gonna go see Dr. Underhill here. Now, this is my fourth time down here. Hopefully not my fourth death, though. We do have new weapons this time. The shield. We're a little bit stronger. We have higher launch damage. Let's just hope it all goes well. Hello? Oh, wait! What? Careful in there, ma'am. Area's under quarantine. I wouldn't go in there without talking to Underhill first. Even if you have, I still wouldn't go in. Oh, hey, you guys are new. Underhill. Excuse me? Are you lost? No. Do you normally barge into people's private workspaces? She clearly doesn't know who she's talking to. <laughs> Shouldn't you be in a safe room? 
Why? Because of those his things the rangers keep going on about. Haven't you people sorted that out yet? The situation down here could spell doom for the Bureau. You mean this mold? Correct. Perhaps you could help me. I require samples of various mold strains, and the mold has made the environment far too dangerous for me to fetch them myself. Really? Mold samples? I thought this could spell doom. It could, and it will, whoever you are. The mold is spreading. We need to find the source before it spreads too far. And these samples will do that? No. Samples of five unique strains, when blended properly, will allow you to travel deeper into the pit where I've pinpointed the approximate location of the source of the mold. Okay. So what do these samples look like? Similar to the one on my table there. I've made a list of the samples I need, here. You'll find them throughout the threshold. I'll take a look. My name's Jessie, by the way. The new director? I'm sure it is. <laughs> this is hilarious because I'm getting the feeling that <laughs> Jessie is a little bit offended that she doesn't care or know that I'm the director. Jessie's growing a tiny little bit of an ego here. <laughs> Have you worked with Emily Pope? Our paths have crossed. Darling arranged for us to have a coffee. A meeting of the minds, he called it. She's talented. I can certainly see her doing well here. I feel like there's a but coming. But she's drunk a bit too much of the Bureau's proverbial Kool-Aid. She shouldn't be afraid to forge ahead on her own. Science is skepticism. Everything must be questioned before the truth can emerge. True, true. I really like how all these research specialists, employees of the Bureau, they all seem to have pretty distinct personalities. Despite the fact that, for example, oh, both Underhill and Pope are really passionate researchers, but they're still different. And they might actually even hate each other. So is Darling your boss? If you insist on clinging to such outdated hierarchies, then... yes. However, I would argue that our fields are too dissimilar for one to manage the other. Of course, Darling would much prefer to find his own miracle solution to the Bureau's fungal frustrations. He always needs to be the hero. Okay. So tell me again how you came to work at the Bureau? Well, like I said, I was brought in as a special advisor. A temporary position, you see. Although that's not the whole truth. I was employed here for a time, straight out of university. After a decade of admittedly fascinating work in threshold research and regulation, I began to chafe under the bureaucracy. I needed a change. Not that academia was so different. And then the mold happened? About four months ago, yes. Since my departure from four the Bureau, months. they hadn't been able to find my equal in threshold analysis. Darling and I had kept in touch over the years, meeting at conferences and the like. He called me, and I booked a flight. I've never been able to say no to a man with a dangerous alien biosphere. <laughs> I had to leave my post in the middle of term, but so be it. So she's a professor. That explains a lot. The mold started four months ago. You know how basically ever since Dylan went missing, we've been looking for him, and that's been a process of 17 years. What changed? Because I'm guessing it's not like, oh, during this whole 17 years, we were making progress every year, and finally we found the spot. I feel like it's more that during these 16.5 years, we didn't have a single clue, and then suddenly something changed, and now we were able to locate the oldest house. The mold seems to be having some weird effects on things. Indeed. Even people are susceptible. The fungus grows rapidly within the chest cavity, killing the host. Luckily, one must ingest the stalks to become infected. Don't eat the mold. Okay. We've always cremated the infected bodies after autopsy, but I believe there may be another stage of maturity. A blooming, if you will. 
I never thought the word blooming would sound so horrible. <laughs> she sounds excited about it. I think she wants to try it out. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. Yeah, I'll get your mold samples for you if I come across them. Which I will, because I'm going there right now. Hey, I don't mind doing your quest and all, but do you really have to put a gigantic thing on my screen there? Maybe we can just change it to something else for now? Oh, actually, we can just take it off entirely. Okay. Threshold Utility Counter Essay. Oh, perfect. We just read the other one. Dr. Darling's recently penned essay titled Mmm contains some glaring omissions that I feel I must shine a light on. Firstly, the entire premise of the essay is that the quarry threshold is beneficial to the Bureau. While the mold is actively hostile, to use his words, we cannot determine the worth of these dimensions and their life forms using bureaucratic definitions. Secondly, the mold is much more beneficial than some rock. <laughs> if the mmm creating the mold were reconfigured in their purpose, the structures they could build would rival the greatest skyscrapers. The mold's resistance to the various strains of disease we've attempted to introduce could be derived into mmm. Yes, admittedly, this application is more difficult than picking up a rock and gluing it to a wall, but I pause to wonder when the Bureau lost its eagerness for a challenge. Feels like there's a bit of a rivalry here. Dr. Darling and the Black Rock and Dr. Underhill and the mold. Significant research has shown the positive effects of talking to plants. I wonder if they talk back in ways we cannot hear. You'll be the first to figure that out, right? Underhill checking in. From Darling to Underhill. Hello, Raya. How's it going down there? Enjoying the mold so far? Settling back into life at the old FBC? I also wanted to ask how your coffee with Emily went. She's a star on the rise, incredibly bright, extremely intuitive, but I want to hear what you thought of her. I think you two could be very good on a project together, could learn a lot from each other. Let's get together and chat about it soon. Anyway, sorry for the interruption. I'm sure you can't think of anything else besides the mold right now. You always were a woman of focus. I always admire that about you. Talk soon, Casper. Uh, this sounds a tad, like, very, very slightly passive-aggressive. Although, I do get the impression that Casper, Dr. Darling, is really, really passionate about this research stuff. That's a good thing. Ooh. Do we really want to come back to this place again? Ugh, it smells so sweet down here. Suddenly I'm really hungry. <laughs> I wonder how this mold tastes. Uh, Jesse? We just talked about not eating it. Whoa! Don't do that, please. That's the thing with the mold. The near-range explosions. Plink Flamingo Supplement Agents known as a transient, commonly found outside the entrance of the Bureau headquarters, would carry the item and loudly claim to be responsible for the lack of inclement weather. The frequency of these claims attracted the personal interest of Dr. Darling. In interviews disguised as casual conversations, the transient reported that the item gives me clouds when it's hot and sun when it's not. An event of note occurred during a heavy downpour when the vagrant was witnessed performing a possible ritual with the item. Dr. Darling reported a wait of mm seconds before the rain stopped. The vagrant was seized the next day. After mm, he was found to possess no mm and was released. The item remains in bureau custody under suspicion of altered status, though this still has not been proven. All known variations of identification formulas have failed to elicit a response from the item. Oh, did we see this one in the Panopticon as well? That's weird though. Maybe certain items are like paired with people and they only have altered effects if certain people are around. Some of these items sound really tempting to use for personal purposes. Oh man, I'm trying to go to an event today, but it's raining. Hey, Pink Flamingo, can you please make it not rain? Please and thank you. Okay. Yes, I know how this place works already. Go away. Go away. 
Yeah, I've seen this beginning area quite a few times now, so I know the spawn points for the initial guys. <laughs> I know we don't want to do the thing where we fight people at a long range here. You can see, they're trying to shoot something at me from really, really far away. But I can just do that, right? Oh! See, that guy just shot something at me. If we're careful, we can snipe off a lot of them from a distance first. There we go. Okay. I'm already doing a lot better than the last three times I was here. Whoa! Whoa! Guy right there. Oh! My god! Look at how much health I lost. Oh! How did I lose so much health that quickly? That's why it's really dangerous down here. Even though I'm a little bit better now, I still don't really feel that good around this place. Little bits of health around here. Eh, yeah, the map is not really a big help here. We got restrooms. Restrooms. One of the mold things we wanted was from the toilet, I think. me for this. Wait, what was the full list? I didn't really get a good look at it. Mold that grows near fresh corpses, grows near television, staircases, the pits. Kind of an interesting implication. Mold that grows near televisions are different from the ones near staircases? Weird. Where are we now? Mm-hmm. Oh, the radio doesn't play. Whoa! What? That chair! <laughs> what was that? Uh, let's get out of here. Sometimes when I look at this stuff, I have no idea if it's the physics engine. Or intended. One of Underhill samples. Oh, there you go. Mold near television. Oh, this isn't an actual episode. It's just repeating. Okay. What was that? Oh, we're back out here again. We have to be a tad careful. I don't really have that much health right now. If we can, I'd really actually love to activate these things first. So that we don't accidentally walk into them later. Hmm. Oh god. See what I mean? <gasps> what the heck is going on down there? Oh! What's this one? This looks like a good one. Mold near the pit. That must be the pit. If I want to try to get up there... What did this place used to be anyway? 
There's lab numbers, so it was just a normal lab. But the entire thing was overtaken by... Mold. Mold near staircase? Found one. Yeah. Okay, we're making good progress here. Do we know where this mold came from? It wasn't always here. Something happened, and then it appeared. Oh! Lovely. Thank you, I got health back. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can't look at the outfits here, by the way. We gotta go back to executive to check them out. Because earlier, we got that golden suit. Oh, that's the green light from the radio. This might be where we get the mold for corpses. There's a lot of dead people here. There's like a trail of people. What the heck? This looks like a good one. Lovely. And it's That's all done. All five samples. I should get these back to Underhill. Sounds good with me. Can we get up here? Ooh. Hidden location discovered. One ability point. Cool. Now that we have levitation, these hidden locations might be places that we can find more of. Don't suppose we can do anything with it right now though, so we'll just save it up. Back to Underhill we go. And where was she again? Over here. Oh, hey! Another location. What? Balloon procedures. Get well balloon. Item must be kept away from animals. The cell must be regularly clean of the black substance the item produces. All cleaning tools must be mm, along with the black substance itself. Description. Item is a novelty balloon made of silver mylar. On its face is a colorful message to get well, surrounded by cartoon hearts. A ribbon is attached to the balloon. Item has not stopped floating after a considerable amount of time in the bureau, which suggests it does not hover through the use of helium. Oh, oh god, it's that balloon that we saw in the Panopticon! I even remember saying that it's normal for balloons to float, but I guess not, since it's not helium. The item produces a dark colored, sticky substance which drips down its ribbon. Oh. For some reason, it's got to be kept away from animals. Somebody angry at me? I kind of wish we had a light sometimes, just to look around. Some kind of flashlight, maybe? <sighs> but hey, maybe we don't want to see what's there. That's also one way of thinking, too. See no evil, hear no evil, and therefore, no evil exists. You look like a woman with mold for me. You are correct. Oh, hey. Hold on. I found all five. But I kind of wanted to eat them. The mold has that effect on some people. Likely due to the fact it's not actually mold, or even of this dimension. I suspect it is the result of two incompatible molecular structures, one dominant, coming into contact. I call it mold, or fungus, because it's closer in appearance and behaviour than anything else we know. Except perhaps bacteria. She reminds me of my old biology teacher. <laughs> Did you happen to meet any more members of my ranger detail? I didn't see any rangers. Just walking mold people. 
unless... Yes. If you found mold people, you found my rangers. I refer to the creatures as hosts. They, like other unwary agents, succumbed to the appetite. But that's nothing for you to worry about. The pill I'm about to make with these samples will make the lower level perfectly safe to traverse. It has the added benefit of immunizing you against the pit's toxic spores. I feel like I should ask to see your credentials. There. That didn't take too long now, did it? What? Not at all! <laughs> Ingest this pill, then go and find the source of the mold. Only there can we begin to understand how to stop it. Take a mystery pill because a rude lady in a hazmat suit tells you to. Great idea, Jesse. Ugh. Honestly, did you want me to wrap it in cheese? Not the taste, the smell. It stinks in here now. Good. That means the pill is working. The worse it smells, the safer you'll be. Now go. Find the source. I guess that's what we're doing. Okay then. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. <laughs> 